Hello, folks. Again, I do apologize for my tardiness. Um, there's still only one more video to go for this week. I think it's just that whole weird work schedule on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I got a whole bunch of stuff on the, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I do apologize for being a little bit late. Next week, I will be much better. I don't have, well, I don't have the one whole thing to worry about. Some other stuff to worry about. That's okay, though. But you're not here to hear about my worries. You're here. You listen to it. There we go. Some pro wrestling. And as always, I have to thank some people. Mustache Pizza 69. Thank you very much for agreeing with me. You, sir. I've earned that six count. And Janetti Spaghetti, you sir, I forget what you commented about. You probably put a yes when I when I put something down. I think that's what you did. That or you corrected me or something. I don't know. But you sir are a master of the air guitar.
Although, with Shadows being said, let's get on to SmackDown. This was weird because I did I forgot there were four matches. There was a lot of filler in between. Remember, this is this is really the go home show to Super Showdown, so it's going to be interesting. So it starts off with some wrestling. Wrestle, wrestle. Uh, starts off with the Usos and New Day taking on The Miz and John Morrison and Rude and Ziggler. Intriguing. Miz and Morrison, they get all the pyro and they even do the slow motion shots with even the pyro being slow. Pyro. Yeah. And as we get back up to normal speed, this was a fun match. I don't know why, but this was actually a really good SmackDown. The wrestling was good. The wrestling was short, though. A lot of recaps, a lot of things teasing. Uh, we'll get to the, those. A lot of kind of stuff from last week. So, but yeah, this match itself was really fun. The heels were in control. Uh, Morrison eventually does isolate Kofi Kingston. He gets beat up by everyone. Again, poor Robert Roode. He still is the best spine buster. Uh, Ziggler kicks one Uso. And then Roode beats up the other. That was awesome. Again, tag team continuity. Very important. Uh, eventually, Biggie does get the hot tag. He starts overheading belly to belly everyone. I think, well, not so much everyone, but he did three of them to the Miz, followed by the Biggie splash. Oh, that can't be good. Uh, then Biggie again. Eventually, Morrison caught him with the knee when Biggie went for his kind of spear to the outside. He got caught with the knee, though. And then John Morrison has the shiniest wizard. Oh, it's so cool to see the shining wizard and the standing moonsault as a combo. Wow. Uh, Roots still has the best spine buster. He must have gotten that. I don't care. Robert Root is the best spine buster. There are some weak spine buster zigzag combination thing. They need to do away with that because it just looked like Root hit the spine buster, which looked great. And then Dolph Ziggler just kind of like spun around in the air. Not so great. But then. We have some gimmick infringement going on. WWE, you best be careful because we have a super kick party. Is there ain't no party like a super kick party? Because a super kick party doesn't stop. Yeah. Uh, they haven't mentioned that, that they had a super kick party. Like, whoa, they better be very close to that. Or the young bucks will, will young bucks will be on the phone saying, hey, Vince, we are we have the super kick party. Can't use that, Vince. Bad Vince. There we go. There goes Bug. Uh, so again, the Usos have a super kick party, and they actually went with a super kick. It was weird because Robert, I think it was Robert Roode, got pinned by the by Jay Uso or Jamie. I forget. It was weird. There was no splash. There was no profiling. Splash. I don't think that's one. It's a little different, at least. Instead, of he, he ate a super kick, and that was enough. Overall, I'll tell you what. This match was fun. John Morrison, they just have to say, go be Johnny Mundo. That's all. That's all. Been complex. Just be Johnny Mundo. And I'll tell you what, I was thoroughly entertained by this match. To me, this was a surf and turf match. And we have Heath Slater and Daniel Bryan along with, um, I thought he was a psychiatrist, and I didn't realize who it was. It was Drew Gulak, all dressed up in a suit. Very smart looking. A far cry from the days where he was Soldier N with a colony back in Chikara. Um, I thought it was a psychiatrist, but no. Drew Gulak's beginning to coach Heath Slater, and if only Heath Slater would listen, we'll get to that later. 
Then there was the Otis and Mandy recap. Tucker Knight confronts Mandy Rose. And Sonya Deville. Did you do something nefarious? Sonya Deville. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo. Boo, Sonya Deville. Or as Simon Miller called her, Cruella Deville. Or, or did Kim Ross call her Cruella Deville? I just realized that, that, that Cruella Deville and Sonya Deville had the last name like a while ago. Maybe that's why I boo her so much. Boo! Boo! Because who else would have access to Mandy Rose's cell phone to say, oh, I'm going to be late? Only two people should. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Boo Sonya Deville! I will forever boo Sonya Deville ever since she beat my princess, Kimberly. That's a whole other issue. And then uh, there was a Symphony of Destruction match, but WWE has to work on its timing a little bit because it was weird because they introduced Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura along with Sami Zayn with his ukulele. Yeah. And then, like, they cut to a commercial, so I figured, oh, they're going to be in the ring. Then they cut to a Renee Young, Lacey Evans promo. Really? So over Lacey Evans. And then, after that, we have Elias goes, We want to walk with Elias! Oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Yeah, and Jack White, hey, he has to be, he somehow has to make money off that. So again, you can also go, oh, oh, Botan. Oh, oh, Botan. Yeah. You can chant anything to the Seven Nation Army. That was pure brilliance. Brilliant! And then, of course, Braun Strowman comes out. Oh, Braun Strowman. Oh, Braun Strowman. Yeah, again, Cesaro and Shane. Cesaro and Shane. Wow, might be off the end, but at least it's pretty close. At least I won't be copyright violated. YouTube, I have my eye on you. Learn my lesson, folks. I'm going to be a good hobo. Uh, but with this, this was the Symphony of Destruction. So again, Sami Zayn comes out with his ukulele. Cesaro has a cowbell. Shinsuke Nakamura eyes a guitar. Should I have a violin, though? An electric violin. And Elias comes out with his guitar playing a song. And Braun Strowman comes out with his like super huge bass viola. And do that's the Seven Nation Army theme too. Uh, with this, it starts off with a tambourine in the ring. Probably the le least likely to cause injuries. A tambourine. Uh, so, um, Shinsuke put it on Elias' head, kind of whacked him with, kind of kicked him in the head with it. Elias started to beat Shinsuke up with a tambourine, of all things. Uh, Cesaro, Elias, you had that weird knee or headbutt. That was weird. I didn't know what that was. Cesaro, again, he, gets, he, he picked up the drum, and he was going to crush it over Elias' head like Bugs Bunny style. But then Braun Strowman sneaks up behind him, behind him, takes it, and puts the drum right through right through Cesaro. That was something straight out of Looney Tunes, folks. That was good. And uh, then Cesaro has a cowbell. Yeah, that just annoyed Braun Strowman and the ukulele. Sami Zayn broke the ukulele over the back of Braun Strowman. His butt. Than that for Braun Strowman. Again, we want Cowbell. And then, actually, during this match, 
I actually forgot that Braun was the IC champion. I'm like, oh, I just realized that. He has a belt. I miss the white belt. The, the white belt, it looked different. Most wrestlers wear dark clothes, dark trunks. So the white belt really popped. The black belt, meh, not so much. And then, of course, there's a table. <laughs> and when we have the table, I am the table. I am the table. I am the table. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, because the one time it did break, and then Cesaro got tossed way over the table. That was weird. And then and he actually slid across the other table. That was pretty fun. Uh, there was a setup. They actually got Elias through one table and Sami Zayn. Not a smart idea. Uh, then Braun suplexed Cesaro. Cesaro was getting whooped on. I feel bad, Cesaro. He was like most in front of everything. You know, I don't think having a snare drum being like the initial shock, the, the shock of the snare drum going over your body is probably more than the pain of it. But then he got suplexed through the pace. And then there was a Kinshasa. Into a Kong. <laughs> you want to talk about Wait. Wait a That is a Looney Tune moment. WWE. Watch that gimmick infringement. And Bugs Bunny. What do you say about that? Uh, Cesaro, he gets his own guitar. He, uh, however, he does not get to use it. I shouldn't say he goes over the table. Because. Cesaro gets power slammed onto said. Oh no, he got power. Was it? I forget. Cesaro. I think Shinsuke got power slammed onto the piano. Say, so like, had a grand piano there. I don't know how they get a grand piano by ringside. That's impressive. Grand pianos are freaking hard to move. I know. My sister inherited my mom's not even grand piano, but like parlor piano. And that was a Pain to move. Pain to ship, too. So that was... I was surprised about that. Because Grand Pianos, they're... I want to say they start even cheap, like 5000 I know they make their own props, but still, this actually looked legit. And Cesaro goes to the table. And eventually, yes, Elias and Braun Strowman win. They pick up one. I'll tell you what, I was thoroughly entertained by this match, though. That's the only thing I care about is my entertainment. When Sheamus comes out, are you entertained? I'll say, yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed it. I wasn't bored. I wasn't checking my email during this match. So, therefore, this is another surf and turf match. Then there was a Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin recap. Uh, Corbin came out, cut a promo. And you know what? Yes, you are on TV. I saw that sign and said, yes, am I on TV? So my response is yes. I saw your sign. Therefore, you are on TV. And that was okay. I guess they're going to do something else. Uh, I think they are having a cage match. I think. Uh, Super Showdown. Someone's having a steel cage match. I forget who that. And I'll have more about that probably Wednesday. Or maybe after Monday. We'll see. Sometime then. Because I'll go over next week's schedule a little bit later. Like soon. Uh, then there was the Moment of Bliss where she announces people in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Batista's going to go in the Hall of Fame. He's earned that. Especially with last year's stuff. Give me what I want. He got what he wanted. Uh, the N N W O for life are going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Although I don't know what they did in WWE. It's more WCW. And then for some reason the Bellas are going in. Both Bells are knocked up. 
Who is it? Brie Bella, I understand. Dang LeBron. They're married. Power to him. Nikki Bella. There's a little floozy there. So, so Nikki Bella. Yep, you wanted kids. Guess you're going to get a kid. Do think she's engaged? I don't know to who, though. <laughs> Unless it's the magic of John Cena. Oh. I don't know. You tell me, my YouTube audience. The Bellas really deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Last thing I saw them, because I'll be honest, I stopped watching wrestling for a while. One I one was like all on panties matches. Like the women were hot, but they just seemed to be stripping all the time. And then the wrestling was terrible. And then I'm like, well, no, I'm actually busy and working. And I didn't have TV for a long stretch either. And then when I got back into it, Nikki, I think, was the one with neck issues. Bree got married to Daniel O'Brien. Daniel O'Brien had a whole bunch of issues with his neck, neck and head, too. So I don't remember seeing a lot of them. I know 2013, I think they had a match. And, and they kind of pulled the Killer Bees switcheroo. But I don't know. The, the women from that particular era really never stood out. Probably with the exception of Alicia Fox. Only because she's been around there forever. I mean, that, I think Charlotte and Becky Lynch were still in NXT. Sasha Banks was definitely still in NXT. Bailey was still in NXT. So yeah, a bunch of them were still in NXT when the Bells were, were doing their thing. And then I think there was the one like horrific promo where the one Bell said, I wish you were aborted or something. It was really cringeworthy though. Don't and don't put it past WWE to do something cringeworthy. I still want to see Scott Steiner. I want to see Steiner do Steiner, man, in his Hall of Fame. Well, generally, if you're a really good wrestler, you have a 2% chance of getting into the Hall of Fame. But you know what? You take some, some fat son of a bitch's 2%, give that to me, and normally I'd be double whatever, so I start off with 4% anyway. So you give me his 2% because he's a fat son of a bitch. Um... So that makes you have 6%. You take some other guy who's a fat bastard, take away his 2%. Again, because I'm the genetic freak, multiply, give that to me, multiply that by 4. So that's a base of 8. Add that to my existing 6. <laughs> and that's 14%. And then really... Only other thing I have to worry about are the are the freaks out there who dig big pop a pump, but because those freaks got in, you know they have to induct big pop a pump. So that so that now doubles my chances from fourteen to twenty eight percent chance of getting in. And everyone else, because there's so many, have like a point zero zero two percent chance of getting in. So in theory, big pop a pump. That's a 28.002% chance of getting in and giving his Hall of Fame speech. Steinert math. Uh, then, oh, you had Daniel Bryan take on Heath Slater. Uh, this was okay. This was a rematch. This was a better, though, because Heath Slater got a little bit more offense. He, he, to some degree, he listened to Drew Gulak until he went to the top rope. Don't go to the top rope. Unless you're a lucha, unless you're wearing a mask, or from Japan, you're tiny. So that way, you know you're good at the top rope. You're he Slater because he Slater. Remember, you have kids you have to take care of, boy. So with he Slater again, he has kids he has to take care of. He should not be going up to the top rope. 
But for the most part, his ground offense was really good and it kind of shook Daniel Bryan. However, he did not listen to Drew. He went up to the top rope, got some yes kicks, and his nights cut short by the running knee plus by Daniel Bryan. Again, this was fun. It was a little bit different. Not so much 50-50 booking because it's 100% booking. There's my cat over there. Let's see that. She knows I'm on YouTube, so she just wants to look at herself. Doesn't want to be on YouTube. That was a fun cheeseburger match. Oh, I forgot to add you. So in the middle of this, Dennis Ronalds! You should have done this a while. Let's see here. To think about something. I just realized that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dennis Reynolds. I do thoroughly apologize. I think you said something to me kind of late in the show and I scribbled your name down. Because the others I put in their more proper spot. You, sir, get an O and F G moment. Yep, so that kind of breaks up the show a little bit. Uh, then we have Mandy and Dolph give her a ride. Oh, and Otis. Otis. Tra Tranquilo, Otis. Otis, you're going to commit. You're going to do something you're going to regret, Otis. Like, pour concrete in onto Dolph's knee or something. Then we did Seamus promo. Yeah, whatever. Uh, then it was Apollo Crews and Shorty G. Uh, whatever. Not even concerned about those two. And we actually had another pretty good match. It was Naomi, who has all the glow and all the fro. Naomi looks great. And Carmella. Carmella, those bottoms are getting, those trunks are getting smaller. And your booty's getting smaller, too. Wait, wait, how does a booty get. What, is, what are you doing with Corey Gray? Okay. Again, yeah, this was pretty fun. Uh, Baylor was ringside. Uh, went, went from handshake to headlock. Yes! Oh, Shaka Rooney. Uh, with this, it was a kind of a slow, deliberate match. Uh, Bailey eventually was cursing and she tried to get involved. But for her efforts, Bailey got tossed. Good, good riddance to Bailey. That evil Romulan doesn't deserve to be a ringside anywhere. And we're just like the good folks at Generation Tech. Humanity first. Romulans, eh. Tribe dropped. Name dropped a couple things already. That's cool. Uh, Bailey got tossed. Carmella did her dive, which is still impressive looking. Again, then the pace quickened up finally. Uh, Naomi did the quick kicks. However, one was caught by Carmella at the end. And that kind of and the trade blows a little bit more. Melo hits a splash. Uh, gets Naomi into the code of silence. After and, and for a while it was like roll up after 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 roll up. Kind of they've done that before. As long as no one lost by roll up, I'm good with that. And then there was it actually became a pretty long match. Uh, then there was the blockbuster into a springboard moonsault by Naomi. Very impressive, Naomi. Again has all the glow. Naomi wins. She's gonna face Bailey. At, in Saudi Arabia? I hope the two of them make it. Well, actually, I hope the two of them make it out. The two of them make up. No! But, yeah, more so, Naomi's going to face Bailey at Super Showdown. I don't know. The math is weird. But I'm actually for Naomi, I think. But for the most part, it was a cheeseburger match. And to end the show with all the pyro. You can tell Goldberg came out. At least he didn't bang his head on anything because he wasn't bleeding. There's, there's no ghost of CM Punk. Goldberg goes to the ring. He gets all the pyro. You can tell there was a lot. Because even he had his eyes closed. He's like, da, 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 da. But yeah, his eyes were shut. He's like, 
I don't think his eyes could take the pyro. And then he comes, starts to cut a promo, and then... Ah, da, 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 da. The Firefly Funhouse comes out with Bray. He introduces all his friends. Uh, Abby the Witch, uh, Mercy the Buzzard, Porcus, and Rabbit says, I love you. Of course, they were threatening to kill the rabbit again. Rabbit has nine lives, I guess. Cats don't. Who, know, who knew that? Uh, but with that, it was, it was fun. Um, so with all those calculations being in, in, being into effect, we'll see what happens at Super Showdown. should be kind of interesting. Again, um, I'll tell you what, this was a fun show. I'm tempted because I'm in such a good mood. I shall say this is a surf and turf smackdown. Not sure what other people have said about it. I think, I think everyone else has said that this was really good. The wrestling matches for change, they were long. There are only four of them. But each match, I think, was at least 15 minutes. So that's pretty good. 15, 20 minutes. That's pretty good because then they had a bunch of promos and a bunch of lead-ins. And there's always commercials. So I'll say like the shortest match might have been like 15 minutes. Actually, I think the shortest match was the Daniel Bryan Heath Slater. That was probably about 10. But everything else, I mean, the first match was good. That had to be about 20, 25 minutes. Um, let's see here. The Naomi Carmella match went about 15, 20 minutes. Symphony of Destruction was definitely like half an hour, if not like 25 minutes. But again, they packed a lot of wrestling in. Good. The promos were good to the point. I can't complain about that. Again, a surf and turf SmackDown. I'd like to thank again everyone for watching. For next week, Sunday, I will put up my A Hobo Goes to the Races video. Again, a little Hobo karaoke going on. Uh, Monday is going to be Monday Night Raw. I'll have to get that on time. Tuesday is going to be kind of a double, double video posting. Um, you'll have my normal NWA and Impact Wrestling. And then it's also going to be a Mardi Gras birthday celebration for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. On uh, Wednesday is going to be AEW. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll pull a trifecta show. I don't know. I have to see how I feel about that. I might pull the trifecta show on Wednesday. So definitely Tuesday or, or Wednesday. I might do either two shows, one a double, one Daytona Beach. Or on Wednesday, just do a trifecta. Um, Wednesday, I'll my predictions for both Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia and Revolution on Thursday night. I'll give my review of Super Showdown. I'm not gonna watch the whole thing because I do have to work. Friday is the normal SmackDown, and Saturday, I'll, Saturday night, I'll be doing my review. Of revolution. That's all. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So stay tuned for a lot more co content. I know that next month I celebrate two years. So I might do a little bit of Inside the Hobo Studio. But we'll see what happens then. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, just like Dennis Reynolds, uh, Mustache, Pizza 69, and, Sp and Gennetti Spaghetti. You too can get your own shout out. Or if you like J Tay, that I have to make maybe later tonight, you get your own character shirt in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching.